Some call it the event of the century, ISOM issue 1. But is it actually good? Let's find out. Hello everybody and welcome to yet another video and this is a very special video my dear friends because this is a review of uh, what many people consider to be the latest big thing it has caused quite an uproar on the internet and this is a review of uh, ISOM issue 1 by Eric July and uh, Cliff Richards and me being a lifelong comic book fan I couldn't pass on the opportunity to read this comic book and review it for you and uh, I have approached this comic book the same way I approach every comic book I read, especially those coming from the United States of America. Me being from Europe, it is very, very expensive for me to get single issues, especially those independent issues, uh, I mean independent comic books such as this one, because the shipping is, uh, well, very, very expensive. So I always read those comic books online, and then if I consider them to be worthy my money, I buy them, uh, and up front I have to say I will not acquire ISOM issue 1 or 2, and we will get into why not. Now, this comic book um, has been advertised uh, kind of this way, which uh, starts and opens the issue, and uh, Eric July says that he uh, would like to thank every single supporter, yada yada yada, and uh, he is referring to the fact that the American comic book industry has been in an unfortunate spot and that he wanted to be a part of the solution. Everything that he was talking about on his channel, in his videos, and uh, that he wanted to create uh, a uh, something for every long-time customer that went to the comic book shop every Wednesday for all of the people that have watched their favorite franchises be hijacked for each person that always wanted to get into an ever-expanding universe but just didn't know where to start. So he wanted to create a comic book that would be the good old style American superhero comic book that you would like to get in a comic book shop that uh, comes out periodically, not every month, but, you know, like once in a while in this case, and that uh, would uh, be a continuing story divided into issues. And he did the exact opposite of what he intended to do. He wanted to do the good old style comic books and what he did, as a matter of fact, was that he did what uh, the mainstream is doing right now. He is writing for a trade paperback. He's writing for a collected edition. It is apparent from the construction of the comic book. It is apparent from the storytelling. It is apparent from the content, what we read, what we see, what we experience here. Um, because there is no, first and foremost, it is quite apparent that Eric July is a beginner writer. Uh, I would be okay with it. Everybody needs to start somehow. I started also one day, you know, in the past. And um, But what really is very negative is that, well, from what I've saw, seen on the internet is that uh, each and every single piece of criticism that is directed his way, he takes with... Uh, a defensive stance. He doesn't really want to accept criticism. And you should to be able to grow, to make yourself better. Uh, we've got this uh, opening page, which for the opening splash page, this is exactly what the American comic book industry is doing right now. Uninteresting shot of a uh, street in an, an American city being drawn in what I call the modern uh, beige, nothing met artwork. This is exactly what those modern comic books, boring comic books created by untalented people look like. Uh, I mean, I was hoping at least for a uh, decent artwork, but this, I mean, this is not atrocious. It is not as if it was uh, drawn by an orangutan, no. But... It's meh, it's, it's meh, it's bland and beige and boring. This is exactly something I expect from an issue of, of uh, a Captain Marvel today. So, yeah, the artwork, the opening page, not interested. Just 
you know, he wanted to be the new Todd McFarlane. He wanted to be the new Rob Liefeld. He wanted to be the new Image Comics. And if you think about what Todd McFarlane did, at, as, at least as far as his artwork goes, the opening pages, the splash pages with uh, first his Spider-Man, uh, like the Torment storyline, or then in his own Spawn comic book, the artwork was exceptional. I know Eric July can't draw. He is not an artist. He is only, he calls himself a writer. So he should have at least hired a better artist. He will never become that which he wants to be, the renaissance of the American comic books, such as what the image guys were this way. And uh, it is apparent that he's a fan of comic books. There are a lot of uh, influences there. This is like clear, clearly um, commissioned Gordon from uh, the Batman. And then we get the introduction of the main hero, which let, let me summarize the story for you in a couple of sentences. Avery, the main character, is uh, apparently in hiding and he used to be a superhero or whatever. And he is looking for a girl and he goes from one place to another, from one crime lord to another. And he everywhere he uh, goes, he gets into a fight with people. People realize that he's kind of strong. And then in the end, he finds the girl. <sighs> and then he goes to uh, some sort of a guy who is like Edna from The Invincibles, who makes costumes for superheroes. And he reacquires the costume, apparently, that he got rid of some day in the past. So, one more thing out of many, which is identical to the modern comic book industry, is that uh, we have an entire comic book issue of a superhero, and we only see him on one page in his costume. The entire comic book issue is him being in street clothes. I have heard many, many criticisms about, uh, you know, this, about this practice, not only in Eric July's comic book, but in the latest Green Lantern issues, for example. You have Hal Jordan, and out of 24 pages, he is in costume only on six or seven pages. I have heard criticisms like that. And this is only one page, one splash page. Him standing upright in a oh mean uh, comic book uh, superhero costume that looks all right, I suppose nothing special. I mean, I I'm saying I'm one hundred percent objective. I am uh, reviewing this the same way I am reviewing m mainstream comic books. I reviewed out of the uh, modern American comic book uh, production I've reviewed, for example, Justice League, The Endless Winter, TMNT, The Last Ronin, the latest Conan the Barbarian by Jim Zub. I've reviewed some Transformers by IDW, uh, many, many comics. And I've, I have liked a lot of them. But the, the least exciting that I remember from what I've read recently is The Endless Winter. And The Endless Winter was a thousand, thousand times better than this. More action-packed, uh, better artwork, 100%, and uh, definitely more exciting. Um, but once again, it was written for a trade paperback. So this is exactly uh, what is, you know, what my biggest gripe with, these, with this comic book is. It's written in a, in a boring way. Eric July clearly has a lot to learn about writing. The artwork is extremely mediocre. It's nothing. I can't remember any memorable page from that comic book. Um, it is written for a trade paper bag. And uh, one more thing. So we wanted to write a comic book that would be like in the style of the good old Marvel comics, right? Uh, so you really need to introduce your hero in an interesting way. And you need to provide the origin uh, in the first issue. Each and every single classic comic book uh, about a superhero and even then later subsequent reboots of those comic book superheroes 
included the origin of the superhero in the first issue. And these comic books, these independent comic books created by independent creators in the United States of America, you can't get them in a comic book shop for five bucks. They are expensive comic books. They cost about 20 to 30 to 40 dollars plus shipping. And it is only a comic book issue. So the practice is, read this comic book issue, I will tell you nothing, and you will have to buy the next one. And spend another 40 to 60 bucks. In my case, it's really up, uh, up to 100 bucks. After shipping, after taxes, after income, uh, like, you know, uh, when it crosses the border, you pay money. I don't know what the word is now. So it's not worth it. It's really not worth it for me. Uh, the three... <laughs> Most interesting part of this comic book was the advertisement that was in the middle of the comic book for a boutique uh, lifestyle clothes. I think somebody told me that it's his wife's uh, company. So, I mean, yeah, it's it stays in the family business. And I, and I find it interesting because if I lived in the United States of America, I could recommend this to some women that I know because I know that they would like this kind of clothes. Unfortunately, I don't, so I can't. <laughs> this made me laugh out loud. This we will win in the end of the comic book. This is precisely how Eric July wants to sell you the comic. You are buying this comic book. And now let's be honest, because I'm always honest. People are buying this comic book to support Eric July. Because they like him as an influencer. Because they like him as an internet personality. Because he tells them uh, that that which they think in their minds, he says that aloud. That the, the majority of the modern comic books is uh, of a poor quality. But he doesn't tell you one thing. Not all of them are bad. You can find many good ones in the mainstream, and I have mentioned a couple of them in this video. Um, so if he says this, if he says the American comic books are bad, Marvel hates you. Uh, by my book, he really should put his money where his mouth is and create something exceptional. And while this was not the worst thing I have read in my entire life, this was worse than that. Do you know why? You will remember the bad thing for, why, for you know, it being bad. You will remember the excellent thing for it being excellent. But this is... Uh, mediocre up to slightly less than mediocre. This is nothing, and this is boring. And uh, the ending, the Ripperverse ethic, um, yeah, just once again, this is what he sells his comic book like. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You still believe in the magic of the culture? You should stay uh, on YouTube and just keep criticizing the mainstream because this is what you can do this is why people love you this is why people are supporting you you are not a writer and you, and you cannot hire creative minds you cannot hire good artists you have recently hired chuck dixon and uh, that might result in a good comic book because chuck dixon is a good writer but uh, maybe you should have started like this in the first place and have Chuck Dixon create your entire universe because you can't do it. I'm sorry, Eric. I'm just being honest. You are um, a very good influencer, but not a good writer. All right, then. My dear friends, let me know in the comments down below what you think. And that will be all. Thank you very much for watching. And I'm out of here.